Road Rash originally burst onto the 16-bit scene back in 1991 on the Sega Genesis. It was a combat racing game set against the California countryside. You had to battle other racers in a bid to win cash, buy new bikes, and ultimately become the best. There were weapons to use or get used against you, cops everywhere, and of course random motorists to mow you down. The music was really unique and I ended up loving the game, easily one of my favorite for the platform. EA would double and triple down on the franchise in the next few years, making sure we had plenty of Road Rash to play. But in 1994, Electronic Arts and Monkey Doo Productions put together a next-generation Road Rash just for the 3DO Interactive multiplayer. This new entry would sport digitized images, textured mapped courses, and a licensed soundtrack featuring some of the era's best alternative rock bands. Using the storage of the CD format also meant that EA could use full motion video to help set the stage for the atmosphere they wanted to create. When it launched in July of that year, it was immediately considered one of the finest 32-bit games yet released, and easily the best game on the 3DO platform. I've talked a bit about it before in previous videos, but today we are going to take a special look at Road Rash 32-bit. Just how good was it, and how did the other versions fare for the Saturn, PlayStation, and PC? Hope you guys enjoy my review of Road Rash 32-bit. The gameplay of Road Rash is pretty much the same as you knew it in its 16-bit form. Choose a track, race against various other personalities, win cash, buy bikes, and move up to longer, more difficult races. The winding roads of the original game make for a similar showing here. You also get many of the same dangers to contend with. There's muck on the track to make things slippery, cops are out to arrest you, and of course cars and pedestrians are everywhere. Thanks to the increased detail of the graphics engine, you also have lots of things that can knock you off your bike in the cities. Trash cans, signposts, phone booths, and many other things can knock you off. And there's even a stage that has an oceanside cliff you can crash over and end the game. As you win cash, you get the option of trading in your bike for a better model. Bikes differ greatly one to another. Some turn easy but are slow, while the faster bikes tend to handle poorly. Some of the more expensive options have nitrous, which can give you a boost when you need it the most. There's also weapons to contend with. You don't get the selection you'd see in some of the 16-bit editions, but you still get clubs and chains to help you out. Some racers come with weapons by default, while some have to steal them during the race. Every racer has the ability to punch and kick to defend themselves. There are two life gauges you need to watch out for. One is your life bar. When it runs out, you crash off your bike and it slowly regenerates. The second is your bike's damage bar. When it runs out, your bike is wrecked and it's game over. When not racing, you can speak to some of your competitors and get a feel for their personalities. Some are friendly, some not so much. Your interactions on the track can have an effect on how they treat you. Attack a friendly and wreck them, and your next conversation may be a bit more aggressive. The structure of the game is to move up each of the five levels by winning all the races for that level. Winning means coming in third place or better to qualify. As you move up the levels, the races become longer and more difficult forcing you to upgrade your bike and race more efficiently. The difficulty by the time you get to stage 5 can be nasty, making this one tough to beat. If you don't want to mess around with the main game, there is an arcade mode that allows you to skip all the money winning, qualifying, and bike buying, and jump right into whatever stage you want. The visuals of Road Rash 32-bit received one heck of an overhaul when it launched on the 3DO. The new polygonal engine allows much more detail and variation in the terrain. You now have cities with large buildings, tunnels, and there are even alternate routes to take. Not everything uses polygons, however. Since this was an early polygon engine, you get standard 2D sprite work as well. Your main character, the other racers, cars, pedestrians, and a ton of other details on the track are digitized 2D images. The two mix surprisingly well, however. Everything scales well enough and looks good in motion. 
The 2D art that adorns the menus is a weird, surreal mix of comedy and exaggerated grittiness. That atmosphere helps set the stage for the feel of everything. It definitely conveys that 90s grunge vibe, something the music and full motion video scenes would help with as well. As far as early 32-bit graphics go, it's hard to find its superior. This was 1994 and home systems really hadn't gotten overly impressive with the Polygon content just yet, so this stood out big time. The biggest issue you'll run into playing it today is the frame rate. The 3DO original is quite choppy at times, seemingly hitting single digits at its worst. Later versions corrected the performance, but introduced other problems themselves. The sound and music section is usually just a few words and then I drop some samples for your enjoyment. And man do I wish I could do that here. This is one of the earliest examples of real licensed music in gaming. During development, some of the team wanted to get the popular band Soundgarden to lend a few tracks to the experience. They were under the label of A&M Records, who originally didn't want to do it, but Soundgarden actually had been fans and wanted to be a part of the 3DO project. A&M Records negotiated a deal that would bring in similar groups under their label, creating one of the best soundtracks of any game of the era. Seriously, the stuff here fits like a glove and the addition of actual music videos as a type of screensaver if you leave the game running was a real treat. I can't play these openly without getting a copyright strike for it, but I definitely want to recommend you check out some of these groups if you enjoy 90s rock. Unfortunately, the licensed stuff does not play during the races, which is instead just some rock-inspired riffs that still go quite well with the action. The original 3DO version of Road Rash showed up in the summer of 1994, but it would eventually get ported to the Saturn, PlayStation, and PC in 1996. The presentation of these versions as far as assets are pretty much identical. You get the same art on the selection screens, the stage layouts and digitized sprites are the same, and of course the same licensed music previously mentioned. Since all of these versions came from platforms that rendered their games quite differently from one another, you get a ton of variation in the quality of the sound and graphics. The 3DO version ran in 480i, so its image is the softest of the bunch. The best you can get out of an unmodded 3DO is S-Video so on a modern display this translates into a somewhat blurry experience. Luckily, everything else about the image is very nice. The clouds in the sky are transparent and scroll smoothly. The vehicle shadows are transparent. It has the best color use of any of the console versions, and the sound is particularly well done on the 3DO version. The bikes are loud and the race music pumps along to the action quite nicely. As I mentioned before, the only real weakness in this version is the performance, which does get choppy at times. The gameplay is still awesome though, and that's what counts. The first version to see a port was the PlayStation in early 1996. It's very similar overall to the 3DO version, including those proper transparencies. It does sharpen up the image quite a bit and improves the performance across the board. Music quality is comparable, as are the sound effects. You will notice some pretty vicious color dithering on the sprites and texture assets, which makes this one the worst looking version of the game to me. I mean, take a look at that sky. The LCD screen you're watching this on exacerbates it, but it was still noticeable on a CRT. <laughs> 
Shortly after the PlayStation version made its showing, the Sega Saturn version came out. In typical Saturn fashion, this version has a great many differences from the original. The clouds in the sky are rendered differently and don't scroll the same. The shadows are no longer transparent, instead now replaced by mesh blobs. The in-game race music has seen a massive overhaul and sounds completely different from the 3DO and PlayStation. Sound effects are more muffled, with some being too quiet and some being way too loud. In the plus column, this is the sharpest and the smoothest of the console ports. While the Saturn version's frame rate does fluctuate, when it's high, it's smoother than both the 3DO and PlayStation editions. The last of the ports came towards the end of 1996 on the PC. And good god does it annihilate the console editions by leaps and bounds visually. If you had a competent PC at that point, you got a crystal clear presentation and vastly improved performance. Seeing this game run was a revelation to me about how much better PC games could be. It's not perfect though. The animated sky is completely missing in the PC version, now replaced with a sky that doesn't move at all. The 2D digitized images also seem to be under a more restrictive color palette, so there's a lot of dithering. The race music has also been redone in what sounds like MIDI, and just doesn't have the same punch as the 3DO release. Many of the sound effects don't have that much energy either. It's a great port overall, however, and still runs on modern hardware. If you find yourself bothered by the oversized heads-up display, hit F10 to minimize it, or hit it again to race without one entirely. Out of the four versions of this you can play, I'd rate it like this. The 3DO version sounds the best of the available console releases. The Saturn version has the highest possible frame rate of that bunch. And of course, the PC version excels at texture quality and a rock solid performance. I think you really can't go wrong with any of them. Gameplay is where it's at, and they all do a fine job in that department. For those wondering about the Sega CD version, it's only loosely based on the 3DO game. Electronic Arts had the bright idea of a bridge product between generations. They basically took the front end and music from the 3DO version and wrapped it up in the 16-bit Genesis graphics. And I say Genesis graphics because nothing here uses the Sega CD. This is no Batman Returns. It seems to reuse the engine running Road Rash 3, or at least a heavily modified version of it. It ain't smooth and the Sega CD certainly could have done better. It does have the licensed music during the races, something no other version at the time could do. Don't be fooled however, this is not Road Rash 32-bit. It may have elements of it, but the 3DO material is vastly superior.
You're not going to get a critique section in this video. Frankly, Road Rash 32-bit is as perfect as 1994 gaming got to me. You can easily find racing games on the Saturn and PlayStation with more content, more modes, more everything, but few of them had the raw fun factor of this game. It was immensely playable even by those that didn't play video games regularly. Could the later released versions have added extras to spice things up? Absolutely. I would have really enjoyed a split-screen multiplayer mode. I could have enjoyed a police mode that lets you run down rashers as the cop. A full map mode would have been cool too, where you could run all the stages back to back in one long course outrun style. But what was here is still some of the most replayable content I've ever seen. I never got tired of it and the drive to see the ending legitimately is still something I'm working on 25 years later. Home 3D graphics before this had been really weak overall. Games looked nowhere near as good as their arcade superiors. Yet this one came along and gave pretty much everyone who owned a 3DO newfound respect for the device. If you enjoy combat racing, I really do recommend you find one of these versions and give it a go. It's simple to get into, has a save system to hold your place, and is one of those games you can dump 15 minutes into here and there without forgetting what you're doing. It was arcade style racing with a perfect splash of 90s attitude, and the end product was one of Electronic Arts' finest games. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.